Siren is the newest title from Hammerhead Studios, the guys you're most likely to know as the ones that made Abe. Are you comfortable? A VR horror experience that came free with your Oculus Home account, in which you're psychologically tormented by an undeniably evil, yet ultimately sympathetic, moth, which is killed by a robot, who then kills you. I found the whole Abe experience a bit of a joke, but it was free. Now we have a fully fledged game. From a genre that can scare you shitless quite easily when you've got a monitor mounted to your face. No, I'm not talking about nudity. Horror! A genre which already has some stiff competition in VR. Siren had a fair bit of hype too. It's been coming for a while, and given how many people, myself included, were hoping to play Alien Isolation in true VR, the obvious similarities – tight, lab-like corridors, stealth, puzzle-focused gameplay, hiding from a weird monster – Early footage all looked professional and exciting. That is until they released a trailer back in November with questionable frame rate and the realisation that maybe mermaids don't make a great replacement for the xenomorph. Still, that was a good four months ago, so I'm sure they've had plenty of time to up their game. They've got a fairly big boy asking price coming in at £15 sterling. So let's take a look at Siren. First off, oh my god what a ball ache. Everything up to here I wrote before I ever booted up Siren. I like to do that, to get down what I think before I play the game and revisit it for my conclusion. I fully intended for this to be a traditionally formatted review, but things have changed. Firstly, I want to share my day one experience of Siren. In the background, I'll play the game footage from the start. The footage will all be full screen in a minute and you'll understand why. So I downloaded the game. I had to wait at least an extra day to buy it because the devs didn't account for the Steam approval system, which takes a while. I had to wait to buy it on Steam because they have way better consumer protection, and also I wanted to be able to put a Steam review out there, and having played the game on Steam is a prerequisite. So I boot Siren up for the first time. I troubleshoot for two hours trying to get the image to display on my screen so that I can record it. There is a problem with Steam VR as of the time of writing this, where the display of only this game would freeze but it would be fine in the headset. In the end, I decide I'm going to have to just play it. I realised later that I could get the developer tools up and record my left eye, so that's what you're seeing now. And a bit later I got functionality through another update, which allowed me to run it through Oculus Home. Anyways, I get it booted up, do the tutorial, and start the game proper. In the first section, all you have to do is get an axe, put out a fire, and kill a scripted mermaid. The issue I had was that I swang my fucking axe like a madman for the first time, and it did nothing. So I kept repeating the process, starting the level again and again and again, and the annoying thing was, hitting it with the axe was the right thing to do. Unfortunately I don't have the footage of that, but I swear to fuck I hit this thing in the head. So next encounter I tried to run, well you can't move when a mermaid's near you and knows where you are. Next I tried squirting it with the fire extinguisher. Every time I die, back to the beginning, a slow walk back to the mermaid encounter. Trying to put out a fire on day one meant using the same button as you push in to move and teleport, as you do to squirt the fire extinguisher. If you haven't figured this out, this means that you walk or teleport into the fire as you go to put it out. That has been patched now. So I played through the entire game and wrote down everything that stood out to me. The conclusion of my review is not positive. So rather than try to convince you with all the little clips and avoiding spoilers to why this game's not worth your time or money, I'm just going to go through it, okay? I'm sorry if there's a part of you that still thinks you'd rather pay and play it. Why don't you just give me a few minutes to show you the first level or so, and then if you still want to buy it, go ahead. Okay, so you get in and immediately there's something a bit strange about the perspective. Walking around, you know, your hands are small. I later on looked at the hands and realised they're probably lady hands, so yeah, okay, they're a bit smaller. But everything around you just looks a little bit strange. That said, it looks quite nice. There's basic interactivity which I'm sort of showing off here, although you randomly won't be able to grab things that you would expect you could. So anything to do with healing or, or anything like that, as far too nuanced for this game. When you get caught, you die. That's all there is to it. Also, it's a bit janky, as you can see. Being able to reach through glass is a bit of a weird one. But you know, the level of polish is okay on the on the interaction. There's a note on the monitor telling you the code to get the axe. For some reason they felt the need to put this on two separate monitors. The other sticky note is actually on the monitor that you stand right next to when you start the game. Next up you go and get yourself a fire extinguisher. This is really on the nose because it's the, 
because pretty much the only thing you do in the tutorial is fight a fire. Uh, it teaches you how to do that, and then when you start the game, within 10 seconds if you know what you're doing, that is the first thing you'll do. And that's the only time you'll do it as well, which just really takes the piss. Everything else in the game is just, you know, holding an item, occasionally shooting. So, you know, why they felt the need to put that into tutorial and not just put a prompt on the screen or something like that, uh, it's beyond me. Uh, also, I go and collect the axe afterwards because I know what's coming up. As you can see, this is a pretty fucking janky game. So, the boxes down the end of this corridor are the bane of my existence. I mean, when you hit them, they don't react at all like plastic. Uh, apparently, they're made out of slate or something. And the two boxes on the left crashed my game twice. And one of them just breaks into, you know, it's like it's like made out of chalk or something. It's, it's fucking strange. Killing this mermaid is exactly as, you know, you would hope it would be. You have to hit it. But in reality, it's not very fun. It locks you in position. I don't know what limitation they had that, that meant that they had to make that such a, a static and boring experience. This was my first time doing this next bit, and there's some actually really good moments in it. Unfortunately, this is absolutely as good as it gets. So you've got the crawling through the vent thing uh, taken directly from Alien Isolation. As you can see, there's some real tension here. I felt pretty cautious. I was playing all slow and peaky. I didn't realise how slow the mermaid actually was. So I'll, I'll skip through a bit, but I genuinely spent about a good minute here walking around and trying to figure out what I could do. Which in fairness, I quite quickly realised was not very much. I saw a dead little boy who I accidentally stood on, and then I accidentally rustled something on the desk. And then I did that, and it was pretty cool. Reflexively, I threw the thing, and I managed to not get seen by the mermaid. Really, I think I should have been seen, but, you know, whatever. That is pretty cool. And I see the key code under the light. Nice little visual cue. And then, unfortunately, I got seen. And I don't know if you noticed, but the audio there was pretty far off. She was in my face, but I could hear her about a meter to my left. And unfortunately, we're straight back to the start. This is my second attempt. I realized the first time, based on the timing of when the mermaid came out, I could probably just bypass all of the frill and tension here by walking straight to the keycard and walking out through the exit. And that's exactly what I did. So, I mean, this is fair enough. It's the first level, depending on the length of the game, this could just be teaching you the rules. Unfortunately, I didn't actually think these were the rules, but every level actually revolves around you finding a key code and taking it to the exit. And that's it. You call the elevator, you walk into the elevator, you look around the elevator, there are clearly no buttons or anything like that, and you've got a key card in your hand. All, all things that are going to be consistent at the start of the next level, obviously. <laughs> and that's a really, it's a really minor point. But come on. Some consistency. Why, why was the button not there? It's not like I would have just walked over to it and pressed it. Anyways, that's the end of the first level. This is where I hung up for the first night. I uh, had to get a bed. But all of my footage from here on is full screen. Now, if you really want to play this game and you won't listen to any criticism, then by all means, go spend the money now. If you'd like to save £15, $20, whatever it is, then I really recommend you stay tuned for my next video or videos, depending on how long it takes. It will all be out within the next day or so, which will hopefully give you all of the interesting bits, all of the funny bits from the game, without the about an hour and a half total of just pure misery. Uh, pure boredom, pure confusion and frustration with how bad this game really is. Because this first level really doesn't actually look that bad, but it's when you start understanding how bad the AI is, how bad the level design, how pointless most of the things you can do are, and how short the game is. That's when you really start to understand what a steaming pile of shit Siren is. So please, let me save you the pain, and tune into part two. And also, fuck these guys.
The only people who seem to have gotten the game ahead of time did a written review and they gave it 7.5. Do not trust these people. They fucking suck. Lack of sound effects robs some moments of impact is probably one of the most untrue things that you could say about this game. The sound design is okay if you had to pick out three things that are shit about this game. That should not be one of them. Awful, awful review. Shell alert. Wee-oo, 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 wee-oo.